Remember, Lyndon Johnson had called Bobby Kennedy and asked for the proper constitutional procedure of administering the oath office, who could do it. He wanted Bobby Kennedy's permission, he even went back and told the people on the plane, the Kennedy loyalists, that it was you know, Bobby's idea to have him sworn in. Bobby later denied that and it caused, caused quite a bit of friction between the two sides. Well, the person they called to administer the oath of office was a lady by the name of Sarah T. Hughes. She was a federal judge. She was called at her home and asked if she would come out to Love Field and administer the oath of office to Bryce, Vice President Johnson. So they called federal judge Sarah T. Hughes. She was called at her home. She was asked to come out to Love Field and administer the oath of office to Vice President Johnson aboard Air Force One. Now, as this was happening, Vice President Johnson and Mrs. Johnson, Lady Bird Johnson, went to Mrs. Kennedy's cabin in the airplane to express their sorrow. They hadn't really had any time to talk to Jackie. So at this time, while they're waiting for the federal judge to come, the Vice President and his wife, Lady Bird Johnson, go to Mrs. Kennedy's cabin in the airplane and express their sorrow. And Mrs. Johnson, and you know, write down the points, but Mrs. Johnson noticed Jackie's dress still stained with the blood, her right glove covered with the President's blood, which had gelled, and she suggested to Mrs. Kennedy that she might want to clean up and change before the swearing in because Lyndon Johnson really wanted Jackie in there when he was swore in. And Mrs. Kennedy stated to Mrs. Johnson, no, I want them to see what they've done to Jack. So again, she refuses to change her clothing. We'll wear this clothing the entire day. Well, Finally, Judge Sarah T. Hughes arrives and boards Air Force One, and at 2.38 p.m., Lyndon Johnson was sworn in as the 36th President of the United States. And you have a picture of that. Somebody pull that picture out. I only need one. So soon afterwards, Judge Sarah T. Hughes arrives aboard Air Force One, and at 2.38 p.m., Lyndon Johnson was sworn in as the 36th President of the United States. This picture, famous picture, was taken by Cecil Stoughton, who was the White House photographer for the Kennedy administration. This picture right here. Now, in the long version of the assassination lecture, I would tell you who each and every one of these people were in the picture. But I'll just point out the major players for you. This, right here, look up kids, this is Malcolm Kilda. And if you look right here in his hand is a dictaphone. The same type of thing that President Kennedy used to dictate the letter to Rudolph Anderson's parents. They had a dictaphone on the airplane because that's how the President would do his work. And Mrs. Lincoln, his secretary, would be able to type his letters. So Malcolm Kilda just happened to have a dictaphone which he pulled out and has the only recording of the swearing in. The lady in the polka dot dress is Judge Sarah T. Hughes. To the left of President Johnson is Jackie Kennedy, still wearing the blood-stained suit from the assassination. To his right is his wife, Lady Bird Johnson, right here. And just ironically, this fellow right here is Congressman Albert Thomas, that Kennedy spoke in behalf of in his speech in Houston, who was on the plane among many other Kennedy supporters and people. But this is a very famous picture that was taken by, who was it? Cecil Stoughton, who was the Weiss House photographer. Well, Cecil Stoughton, by the way, was handpicked by Mrs. Kennedy and the President to be the White House photographer. That's the first time in American history that we had a white, official White House photographer, and every president since appointed an official White House photographer. Well, at 2.46 p.m., Air Force One left Love Field heading for Washington, D.C. At 2.46 p.m., Air Force One departed
for Washington, D.C. At 3 o'clock, President Johnson asked one of his aides to please call Mrs. Rose Kennedy, the president's mother. He wants to have a conversation with Rose Kennedy. This is pretty historic, this very brief conversation. So at 3 o'clock, as the plane is flying towards Washington, D.C., President Johnson asked one of his aides if he would please get Rose Kennedy, the president's mother, on the phone. And here is the conversation. You do not have to write it down. But tell me when the historical significance happens. Mrs. Kennedy answers the phone. Linda Johnson says, Mrs. Kennedy? Rose Kennedy responds, Yes, Mr. President? Lyndon Johnson responds, I wish to God there was something that I could do and I wanted to tell you that we're grieving with you. Rose Kennedy responds by saying, Yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I know, I know you love Jack and he loved you. President Johnson became so emotional on the phone and he was not a man to show emotion. He had to give the phone to Mrs. Johnson because he couldn't talk anymore. Mrs. Johnson says, We are glad that the nation had your son as long as it did. To which Rose Kennedy responded, Yes, well, thank you, Lady Bird. Thank you very much. Goodbye. And Lady Bird finishes the conversation by saying, Love and prayers to all of you. At 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Air Force One, lands at Andrews Air Force Base in Washington, D.C. At 6 p.m., hasn't this not been a long day, folks? At 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Air Force One lands at Andrews Air Force Base in Washington, D.C. Who met the aircraft immediately? Bobby Kennedy. Bobby Kennedy board the jet and he immediately pushed his way without talking to anyone to the back of the plane where Mrs. Kennedy was sitting. He pushed right by the new president, didn't even look up to acknowledge it. Pushed right by the new president, didn't even look up to acknowledge it. Now it was Linda Johnson's plan that he wanted to do something presidential. He, his plan was that he and Mrs. Kennedy would exit the aircraft together with the body of the slain president. Bobby Kennedy wanted no part of that. A snub that President Johnson would remember forever. So Bobby Kennedy had wanted no part of Lyndon Johnson, didn't like Lyndon Johnson, wasn't interested in acknowledging Lyndon Johnson. His goal was to get to the back of the airplane and get Jackie off that airplane with the president's body. So picture this, you don't really have to write this part down, but a lift truck pulls up to the side of the airplane, and this normally would be used to put food on an airplane, and it lifts up, they put the president's casket on the lift truck, hoist, it goes back down, the bronze casket was unloaded into a waiting ambulance, Robert Kennedy and Jackie Kennedy get in that ambulance, and the president's body is taken to Bethesda Naval Hospital. And Lyndon Johnson's kind of on the plane, holding the bag, so to speak, does that make sense? <laughs> So a lift truck comes up to the side of Air Force One. It's normally used to put food on an airplane. It's lifted up. You'll see a video of it. Takes the president's body down. They load it onto an ambulance. Bobby Kennedy and Jackie Kennedy get inside the ambulance with the president's body. And the body is taken to Bethesda Naval Hospital for what? The autopsy. It is. Now why was it taken there? Why was it taken somewhere else? Bethesda Naval Hospital. Ms. Kennedy was a veteran of the United States oh. Navy, and he also, that was the hospital that was used during his presidency if he had any issues. So that's why it was Bethesda. Because he was a naval officer, and that's the one he chose to be his hospital. Well, President Johnson and Lady Bird leave the aircraft after the Kennedys had departed, and at 6 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Lyndon Johnson gave his first public speech as President of the United States. They had microphones there preparing him for a statement. His aides believed he needed to make a statement as soon as he got off the airplane, 
and that happened at 610 Eastern Standard Time. He will give his first public speech as president. This is what he says. You really don't have to write this down. He says, this is a sad time for all people. We have suffered a loss that cannot be weighed. For me, it is a deep personal tragedy. I know the world shares the sorrow that Mrs. Kennedy and her family bear. I will do my best. That is all I can do. I ask for your help and God's. That was his statement. Um, with that said, what I want to do before we get into the interrogation of Lee Harvey Oswald today is I want to show you these videos. First, the, witness from the witnesses from the assassination. Secondly, witnesses from the time that the president's body leaves Parkland until it lands in Washington. Also, witness from, witnesses to the J.D. Tippett shooting and the arrest at the Texas Theater. And then one more video that I'll share with you in a minute. And then we're going to have our little surprise. So we got about a few minutes. Worth. Each one's about 10 minutes long. So if somebody wants to hit the lights for me, that would be awesome. 